whether working in video or in still photography, getting the right quality of light is important. Welcome to the Naked Photographer, where I'll be exposing myself. No, 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 I won't. Mm -hmm. I sound better in my head. My initial plan today for this video was to go over an inspection light for judging the quality of your prints when you're printing in the darkroom, or if you're in the studio, judging color prints. However, when I was setting up all my video stuff, I really didn't like the quality of light that's on me. Now I'm using the same kind of lighting that I'm, I've always used in the darkroom, and really what it is is a newer CN160 light. It's um, inexpensive. They're like $25 on Amazon. <clears throat> They're LED and they do pretty good. That's what I've got on me right now. Without it, you get that. Ugh, not the best lighting at all. So, <clears throat> there we are. Um, I really find it a little too directional even now. Uh, I, I really don't like it. So, what I'm going to do today instead of the inspection light, which we'll do in the next video, is build a diffuser. So let's go down to my studio area and make a diffuser for this light. To start, I'm going to use canvas stretcher bar from Hobby Lobby. I'm also going to use a 5 8 inch baby stud that I got from b and It's impact brand, only about three, three and a half dollars. On one end is a quarter inch hole, and the other a 3 8 inch. To attach that, we're going to use a furniture stud that I bought at Lowe's. It's a quarter inch by 20 thread bolt on one end, and just a wood screw on the opposite end. This will screw directly into the brass stud. Now to get that into the stretcher bar, we need to drill a hole so it doesn't split. So with a 3 16 inch bit, make your hole. And you'll notice on the furniture bolts, there's a straight section with no threads. We'll need to recess a quarter inch hole just slightly so that that'll fit all the way through. Set those aside, get some wood glue, and spread it on your joints, and join all four pieces. You may need to use a hammer to help those joints get together. Just tap it in, the glue will spread, and they'll join. Get a nice tight joint. To ensure that it's square and not a rhombus shaped, get a measuring tape and measure diagonally from one corner to the other in both directions. If it's off, you'll need to push the top one side or the other. Once you have an equal measurement, you have square joints. Take your furniture stud and put two nuts on the end and tighten the nuts against one another. This will give you something to grip with a wrench in order to tighten the furniture bolt into the wood. So get it started as far as you can. Then using the wrench, go ahead and tighten it until the quarter inch threads are the only thing outside of the wood. Then you can take the nuts off and you're ready to attach the brass stud. Get your diffusion material and cut it to size. You can attach this through several different ways. I'm choosing just to use simple masking tape. So this is painter's tape. If it's something you know you'll keep on permanently, you can adhere it with glue, epoxy, or any other means. To 
just make sure you use something appropriate to the materials. And be sure to draw it tight so you get a nice even diffusion without wrinkles. If you need to, you can add additional diffusion material to the back side to get a double diffused light. And here are the results. So I'm using just a wooden frame. I'm using the um, uh, stretcher bar for a canvas from Hobby Lobby, cheap stuff. You don't have to get that. You can use just regular wood, just butt it against each other, glued, nailed, screwed, whatever you want to do. But this stuff, it's already cut to join. It gives nice square corners, and it's just as cheap as uh, pre-cut boards at the hardware store. And then the actual diffusing material is Lee 216 Frosted Diffusion. Uh, it sucks up a lot of light. I actually have two of those newer CN160 lights on, and they're on full power right now. But it does make the light a lot softer, a lot more global, and the quality is a, a lot nicer for what I'm doing. So I'm going to use this when I shoot in the, the darkroom from now on. Now downstairs in my studio when I video, I'm using a large 40 by 40 inch softbox with a bunch of fluorescent bulbs in it. So I'm already getting a large diffused light source. In here, I wasn't so much, and I really felt the quality was a little bit too harsh. And I can see that it's already putting some more light back there, so I'm getting less light fall off from the inverse square law. It's not as dark. It evens it out just a little bit, and it balances pretty nicely with the two recessed lights up in the ceiling. So quality's uh, a lot nicer. Uh, I feel like this is probably really where I want to go in anyway. So easy to make, inexpensive to make. The Lee material comes in a large roll, and I want to say it's like a hundred and so something dollars for a roll, four foot wide. You can use it for a lot of stuff, but it may not necessarily be in your budget if you want to go inexpensive with this. So there's a lot of alternatives. And in another video in the future, we will go over several different kinds of materials you can buy at the fabric store or otherwise to get diffusion. And we'll look at what the material is, how much diffusion it, it really causes, and how much light it blocks. So we'll cover that in another video, and you can really choose the right thing for you. So if you're a student or just on a tight budget, you can make one of these inexpensively. Uh, the lead material, it's a little pricey up front, but it's a long roll. It lasts a long time, and it does give nice light. So that is not a bad alternative for you. Thank you for watching. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. And if you've had some uh, luck with the diffusion material, leave that in the comments so we know what it is.